so grass and dirt But turn down the volume on Dick and Bird Buck Dick and Bird Buck Dick and Bird St. Paul admitting the law and life And hitting rock bottom Drugs in the ex Buck Dick and Bird Buck Dick and Bird Fuck dick and burn! Fuck! Fuck dick and burn! Fuck! Welcome to Minnesota Foul Play by Play. This is your host, Anthony Barriano, joined by the Brothers Hazes. As you can see, Mike is very pleased to be with us, and uh, we're off and running. Uh, let's see here. Let's talk about the Minnesota Twins, maybe. Uh, Mike, what do you have on Just, the latest? Yeah, quick update. Uh, it, it, nothing's really changed since the last time we talked. All the chatter on all the forums is he still got some people disappointed that the Twins signed Correa. Majority of fans, though, obviously are as excited as we've been, especially on his contract. Um, I love the comparison of this team to the old team with Morneau and Maurer, the Eminem brothers, to we got BC now if we keep our eyes. We've got ABC. If it's, how it, it's a big That's F. how it might fall in the lineup. I would be beautiful. I would enjoy that. Hey, Brad, we can see you. How are you doing, buddy? Finally. Yeah. Oh, there he goes again, twitching yeah, like crazy. What are you on? on? Give me some of that, man. That looks great. Looks uh, like I'm jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get on to the Minnesota Vikings. That's how excited he is loss. about the Korea signing. I mean, he ought to be. Uh, and the resulting press conference. I don't even know if we have to talk about the press conference except for why the hell are we not done with Ed Donatel? Uh, exactly. Mike Yelts- okay, Brad, go ahead. What do you got to say? That, that press conference did nothing. It basically, to say that Kirk Cousins is our quarterback, well, I would hope so. I mean, so. you set 30 some, th- 30 some million dollars on him. I would hope you said 35, 36 million. So, yeah, 36.25 as uh, cap figure next year. So, I mean, I, I, I don't I don't know what it was. Um, they talked a little bit about, you know, Jeff. It Justin. was a thanks for coming out, is what it was. So, I mean, here's the deal if it doesn't happen, I mean, next year's already going to be a tough year, in my opinion. I I think it's a – I think they should pseudo-rebuild. They don't have to do a full-on blown rebuild. Um, At least on the defensive side, they need a rebuild. Well, that's the only way they're going to get better. Actually, you know, that's the thing. Patrick Peterson was the best cornerback we had, but we didn't nearly have one anywhere near the top besides him. But Uh, that's really getting rid of your defensive coordinator, man. Like – I mean, you can't, that's what well, you can't fix that by replacing your defensive coordinator. Well, no. Either. And that's, I read an article from one guy who said we shouldn't jump to the gun and get rid of him. And he was basically saying, you know, with, he didn't have the personnel to run his scheme. Well, then well, why do you bring in him scheme. at the beginning? Yeah. You adjust know, we've your got fucking an, scheme. Yeah. We've got an old fucking defense. And I for agree. his scheme, we don't have the linebackers to do what he wants us to do. So what? That defense was playing pretty goddamn well after uh, under the old man, even though he was running his fucking, uh, you know, team like a prison camp. This is awesome. We got so much TikTok. I'm going to be doing a lot of editing tonight. Uh, but, yeah, I agree with you entirely. Actually, Brad, your your audio sounds better if you don't use your video. So I just know that, right? I don't know what the fuck is going on. But anyway, yeah. you updated your computer and you're probably oh. not. Yeah. Go so ahead. Donatel doesn't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've all agreed that Dalvin Cook is our best trade uh, asset, right? Yeah, let's, let's get Except him back. We owe it. That's the thing is like we have so much sunk money into him. It's like you trade him and it it doesn't really do any good in terms of the cap. I, I think it does. I mean, it depends on what you get back. Like I'm looking at like Jalen Ramsey. Fifth round pick. You know, no, no. I, I'm looking for a shutdown corner. The Rams have two of them, and one of them is way too expensive for them. I figured that would be the best thing we could do, and it ends up costing us money. So my my philosophy is on this one, like trade Dalvin Cook. For something. Whatever you can get. First round pick or a better first round pick than what you got. You can't get you're not gonna get a first round pick for Dalvin. There's, yeah, you're right. Get we fifth. didn't actually run the ball that well this year. We were like six worst fifth, in the league. No, it's a six round pick. There's but I think I think people recognize him as like a top tier court uh, running back. Do they? One hundred percent. Yeah. That's there's teams out there like 
I would, in my humble opinion, Miami. Miami goes and gives us a second round pick, a third round pick. We only have four picks next year. That's true. So that that goes into. Although even my, Miami didn't struggle running the ball as much as we did. No, but to add a Dalvin Cook to it, I mean, Grim, they they got some studs back there, but who knows? They'd like to do some weird ass trades, so maybe maybe we could do that. That's because uh, Miami's creative with the run game, and they let their wide receivers run the ball. Okay. That's why their yard per yeah. carry is so much better than ours. Maybe the Bills could actually develop a run game. We could give them. They could have the Cook brothers. Back oh there. God, <laughs> I would feel bad about giving the Bear, the Bills any more ammo. Like boy, oh boy, they're, so, they're pretty I mean, good as it is. That's what I think is if we can trade some of these players away and possibly get more draft capital, yes, something more. that can, I mean, no, and that's the, it, I think cook, I mean, we have to move on from him just because clearly our record is reflective of having a great offense and our defense was trash all year. Yeah. 30, I think ranked 31 in, and we can do as well in the run game with Alexander Madison as we can with Dalvin Cook. Exactly. exactly. If we can keep most of the other pieces of the offense, Thielen might be gone as well. Unless I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't see anybody really taking him, so that would be... Well, so, but that goes into my thing, too, is these guys, in my opinion, should be cut, and I don't know if we can get anything. I mean, if we could get a fifth or sixth round, seventh round, maybe, I don't know, Kendricks, we can't keep him. We cut well, he him. was actually a pretty good interior linebacker uh, last year, according to not in this focus. scheme. He's just he's not athletic it, enough. It anymore. doesn't utilize him enough in the blitz. No. It doesn't <laughs> utilize him enough in the blitz. That's the problem. It's the scheme. So even like he's what fourteen, fifteen million against the cap. If we cut him, we save I think nine and a half million. Um, same way with like Harrison Smith, we got to cut him. Like. Jesus, I, Brad. I mean, Harrison Smith was – I mean, a, Bynum is a terrible safety, and you're getting rid of, like, the only safety we have better than him. Well, what are you going to put in that spot? We got Lewis what Sign I, coming back. What I'm looking – what I'm looking I think at, is how you say his name. What I'm looking at doing, though, is getting rid of these players because our cap space in 2024 right now is projected because we don't have hardly – well, I think we'll have 29 players on the books – our 2024 you mean 23 season no, is 23 oh, the super bowl would yes, be in 24 yes, yes we're projected right now if we can i know negative 13 million dollars yes so our projected cap in 2024 right now is 90 million dollars so if we can pseudo get rid of some of these players and get talented people in here i mean we're set up for 2024 where this might just be a bump in the road our offense obviously can keep us in games. Yeah. So I, I say be proactive. I mean, Thielen, who no. knows? Thielen might restructure and play for nothing. Uh, you never know. He um, not that he doesn't love this team that much. Nobody loves this team that much. Well, no, in that he's not. For what he's already given. I'm a Lions fan officially. That's how much I love this fucking team. What he's already given this team, I don't know why he would. Why he would loop. No, give up millions of dollars. No, just, he can come back like get Ma your payday with the Patriots. You know, Bill Belichick's been waiting for you with open arms, and he'll turn but, you into whatever you were, you know, two years ago. But so that's my work. thing is with even if we lose the talent we're talking about on defense, clearly with Donatel, even having him, we were trash anyway. Right. So why not do a almost a full rebuild on defense? We spent most of our draft capital last year on defense. Bring a new coordinator in, and if we can bump that from being the 31st worst defense, not even up the coordinator in year one, they're just not going to. They're gonna they're gonna do everything they can to to help him do his job, and that's just hilarious to me because a coach should be doing everything he can to help them do their no. jobs because that's what a fucking coach does. Uh, no, that's maybe they're gonna, gonna get rid of him. Maybe he doesn't want to make a rash decision, but I totally fucking agree how. You, if you can't adjust to who you got, you ain't a good coach. Plain and simple. You're too fucking old. Get the fuck out of the game. Get somebody else in here who can fucking deal with what he's got. Okay. No, on no. to the Minnesota Wild. I'm done talking about <laughs> hey, Wait a second. Wait a second. We'll just okay, wait a one, more, one more thing. I, I got a list of free agents on our team. Okay. Do yeah, we, we were going to. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Bradbury. Do we bring Bradbury back? Yes. He's 
If he's cheaper okay. than ten million. Alexander Madison. Yes. Yes. Even even if we don't move Dalvin Cook. If we don't move Dalvin Cook, then no. Okay. Uh, Patrick Peterson. Yes. He's so cheap. <sighs> Irv Smith. No. <sighs> it depends. We Are we going to trade TJ Hawkinson? No. We're going to extend and even Hawkinson. Then, yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe you keep <clears throat> Irv Smith just because he's going to be cheap next year, too. And then you can run a really good two tight end set. He's projected. Yeah. He's projected on freaking – Pro track or whatever the hell this is to make ten million dollars next year. Oh no, then no, no, absolutely not, not at that. Let somebody else gamble on him. Yeah, and then obviously Greg Joseph gets the axe, right? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, though. It's like, what are we going to get to replace him? And it's just going to be a six rounder. Who that's may or may not need a kicker. I not if we do what I want to do. (laughs) <laughs> go on go for it up two. go for two all the time and anytime you're in the middle of the field just fucking go for it and if you're in field goal range you ain't you ain't right. go final for thoughts it. final thoughts on it i just want to say that i had a blast this last weekend even though it didn't turn out the way it was i had a lot of fun too i never laughed so hard in my life oh god what a great day what a great way to end the night with michael sleeping like a baby that was <laughs> that was really nice to see that he was he took the loss so well Okay, let's let's move on to the winning team in Minnesota. The Wild stole one in Washington last night. The defense played incredibly, especially Philip Gustaf- Gustafson, who I believe is taken over the number one goalie spot for the Wild. Uh, three of the four goals scored were by defensemen last night, which is freaking awesome. Good, that's an awesome sign. And then Gustafson has 34 saves with two big power play saves. Uh, and it's the start of a four-game road trip on the East Coast where I think I was really scared for a moment after that first period, the way they, we got 10 minutes, the way the uh, Capitals just kind of dominated us in that first, uh, first period. I was really worried about the rest of the East. Cause I just feel like they're just so much better than all of the West. So uh, think, we got Carolina, Florida, and Tampa Bay coming up. Brad, your thoughts. I, I, I just think stay consistent, just stay consistent, you know, keep working out the, the flaws, you know, and if Gustafson's going to be the guy, let's go. Like I, I like him so far. He looks very calm back there. Let's get primed up and let's let's win a playoff series or two. I That'd mean, be let's, awesome. Let's not have just a great record. Let's let's go perform in the playoffs. I mean, now that football's over, I'm gonna convert way more of my time to watching. Oh, they are a lot of fun to watch, my friend. Holy cow! Oh, they are. It's they're the best Minnesota. They look terrible in the first period, and then they come out in the second, and they they outscored the Capitals three zip in the second period. And it's just like, where did that come from? They didn't look like that team in the first period. What happened? And I don't know if it's coaching staff or these guys, I think it's just these guys. They know when they come out with sad legs or lazy legs and they're just like, okay, let's fucking turn up the energy. And they start throwing their weight around. And I like that about this team too. We've got Reeves, that fourth line. Holy shit. We got a line that hardly gives up any goals whatsoever. And it doesn't matter if it's, they're going up against the first line. And that's a beautiful thing to have. Mike, any thoughts? I, 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 liked what you said. I liked what you said about coaching. I think the first period of the game was rather fucking boring. Yeah. But uh, boy, Spurgeon coming through, he fucking hit that fucker hard. Um, no, they're fun to watch, but I, sorry to fucking bring it back to goddamn football again. <laughs> but the coaching analogy is the best where it's like fucking second quarter goes through and you're just like, Put a fucking spy on Jones. Stop the fucking quarterback from rushing. Yeah. We don't change anything. But Nothing. So yes, it is nice watching a team that evolves in a game. You're right. Even Inter- in the, yeah, the middle of the first period. Adjustments are fantastic. Shot, like fucking four to one. And it's yeah. like a whole new team comes out in the second period. Right. And it's like one of those like almost gift games. And you're like, that's awesome. Yeah. Way to flip the script. So no, I I share the enthusiasm with this team. I don't know how far they'll go in the playoffs, but hey, if we get one playoff win, you know, or a one playoff series win, I'll be happy. That'll be a. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree, and and that's what we want out of the Twins as well. Mike, give us your Twins update. Yeah, just a fucking win by the Twins would be fun. <laughs> They're zero and nine, zero and eighteen since two thousand four. <laughs> I think uh, if if we don't make any moves today. Uh, we need to pray to God that uh, either Molly or Gray turns into something better than Pavano, or it's going to be another one of those series. 
I think I see. And this Pavano team. was pretty good. He won a playoff game. I'm pretty sure. No, I know, but that's the For best us. comparison. <laughs> Yeah. That's what our team is made up of Pavanos again. That's why Pablo Lopez for Luis Arias is getting so much traction. That's a is that Pavano though? Does I know. Pavanos have our last playoff win? He might. That's a, that. Look that up. Somebody look Pavano that didn't up. No, we watched. We we're at that game. They lost. Oh yeah, yeah, you're There's right. That series, I think they had ninety. Yeah. Ninety or ninety-one. That doesn't games. mean he wasn't the last one to win one though either. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. uh, anything else on the Twins, Mike? No, the the future's bright. I hope we keep uh, agreed. Keep, keep, hope we keep Lee, Lewis and Lee. I just want to see the next two to three years having Lewis, Buxton, Lee, Correa, and Buxton. Correa, Lewis, Lee, Miranda on the field at the same oh, time. Miranda's and if my boy too. Kirilov can, if his risk can stay true. Problem is, we're just talking about position players, and those guys don't throw the ball. No, I I, I get that. Except I get the other that. position players. The future's bright for the Twins. All right, let's talk a little about the Australian Open. Uh, the weather has been shit. Uh, I usually watch this tournament every year, if you don't know, like overnight. Uh, sometimes I take time off work in order to do so. Sometimes I'm unemployed, so I can do so. Uh, <laughs> but I haven't been able to do so the last couple of days because there was 98-degree weather on Monday, which had all outdoor matches suspended. And then the rain flooded courts on Tuesday and suspended play again. Uh, so watching this thing's just been a goddamn nightmare. The result has been watching ESPN Plus feed, uh, feeds showing empty courts, uh, either full of rain or just with nobody in the stands. Uh, another big downfall of the Australian Open this year, there's no Nick Kyrgios, uh, but his doubles partner, uh, Thanasi Kakanakis, my favorite name in tennis, and probably in sports, uh, will play with Andy Murray around 2 a.m. tonight. This is uh, Wednesday night, Wrestling Wednesday. Uh, and that should be fun because Andy Murray's really good, but I don't even know if that doubles team is as good as it was uh, with Nick Kyrgios on it. So uh, that's, I think, the second best doubles team in all of the ATP. Uh, the WTA had some pretty good fireworks yesterday. 18-year-old qualifier Diana Schneider pushed uh, sixth-ranked Maria Sakari to the limit. Uh, Schneider plays my kind of game. Uh, she hits flat fast winners on every shot at nasty angles and takes all the chances. She's a lot of fun to watch. I can't wait for her to become the next Layla Fernandez. Uh, who, who plays, gets, Tony uh, then who plays my, my, my kind of game then? Uh, nobody in the, uh, WTA or ATP plays your time kind of game, Mike. Okay. All right, the love game, the love, we got to go back to like the seventies to find somebody who plays your game. Okay. <laughs> Layla Fernandez got out of the first round for the first time with ease. Uh, that's good. Good. To, that's just awesome. Cause I, I love her. She's fun to watch. Uh, she's got great. I mean, her mental uh, ability on the court, just, I, I don't, I can't keep that calm, but she seems to do it just so easily. Uh, Anz Jabur is still around. Uh, she'll play at 2 a.m. tonight. And uh, Rafael Nadal is not around. He got injured yesterday and, uh, lost so i mean novak djokovic was probably the favorite on the men's side to begin with uh he'll play at 2 a.m tonight uh that's thursday 2 a.m central time uh any thoughts on the state of tennis boys we got three minutes 30 seconds like for me i just you you got me hooked on uh nick Camilo, like, oh nick curios yeah it's hard not, not to love that guy he's not in it so like honestly i didn't even know what was going on until you told me yesterday but There's now you're but now women. you're hooked on Camilla Georgie. Yeah. Yes. yes. So I, I will be tuning in. <laughs> Mike. Yeah. Mike doesn't give a shit. I don't really care. I just find it funny that uh global warning global warmings or global warming. I can't even fucking say the word anymore. It's been so long, it's been around is ruining sports. I love Maybe it. it's what you're doing <laughs> to contribute to global warming by smoking those cigarettes, Mike. No, I don't have a window open, so I'm keeping it all contained in the house. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah and on the same day all this shit was happening greta thunberg was getting arrested for protesting coal anyway there's an aew show tonight it's called adw dynamite it's the best wrestling show on the planet uh jake hager and ricky starks are going at it jake hager really likes that hat uh this is probably all going to be over by the time that you get to it so maybe i should just tell you he's going to win ricky starks is going to win uh willow Nightingale <laughs> versus tony storm i'm gonna be on storm. team willow but tony storm's gonna win brad's right about that yes uh brian danielson versus bandito this is gonna be a great match this might be the the best match of the night uh it might be the best match of the year i don't know about that no but brian danielson is the best technical wrestler he will in wrestling. Win. 
and Bandito is so fun to watch. Uh, so Danielson has to win in order to challenge MGF for the AEW Heavyweight Championship. Hey, and he Tony, Tony, yeah. give me 20 seconds at the end. So let me know when we got okay. it. Okay. Orange Cassidy Hopefully. versus Jay Lethal for the AEW All Atlantic Championship. You got to give the people what they want. Orange Cassidy's going to win that match. And then in the main event, some Minnesota sports talk for you, Michael. Minneapolis's own top flight in the main event versus the Young Bucks, two thirds of the AEW Trios champions. Is this the big match the Martins finally win? I sure hope so. And it sure seems like the rumors online seem to think also. Mike, go ahead. You got one minute. I, I've got nothing to. I'll, I'll give my. I'll defer my time. To okay, Brothers. Brad. Like you got a minute fifteen. Have you guys looked? Have you? You guys haven't looked up what we just talked about the Twins' last winning pitcher. Have you? Oh, no. no. Give it to okay, us. Okay, so you can – I will give you guys each 10 seconds to guess this without cheating and looking this shit up. Uh, in the playoffs? It would have play- been 2002. Um, Johan Santana. Uh, Jack Morris, 1991. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, you are right. It, yes. it was Johan Santana, Santana, game one, the 2004 ALDS. Yeah. And then we didn't win a game ever, ever again. We haven't had a pitcher like him ever since. Why well, extend him? Why extend him? Why spend yeah, right? on He only went on to win that. another Cy Young, right? <laughs> and he had a no-hitter with new, uh, the Mets at, like, damn near 40. Yeah, he was pretty good. All how right. About tra- how about training for Chris Sale? No. No, thank okay. you. <laughs> I'd rather have Pablo Lopez. Actually, we'd like the other guy. Okay. Thank you for joining us at Minnesota Foul Play-by-Play. Follow us on TikTok at Minnesota Foul Play-by-Play. And you can find all of our notes at foulplayplay.com. Fucking ridiculous! And Brad is...